This is Make It Plain. Make It Plain. M I P. With my Samela Matsumo. Mark Thompson. Make It Plain. Get woke. God bless you. Good morning. Get woke. Ladies and gentlemen, MIP is COVID free. Free meaning you don't need a subscription to MIP every day now for a limited time. While we endure this pandemic, we want to make it available to everyone. So wherever you get your podcast, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, Pandora, MIP is COVID free and available to you and everyone without a subscription. Ladies and gentlemen, for the last five years, Moms Demand Action has stopped the NRA's priority legislation in state houses more than 90% of the time. My guest today is a mother of five and the founder of what is now the nation's largest grassroots group fighting against gun violence. Moms Demand Action for Gun Sense in America. And as we've been discussing folks uh, on the show lately, uh, things have changed for those of us who are activists and we're having to do it in a virtual way. Moms Demand Action is no different and they've been pretty successful at it as well. We're happy to have the founder of Moms Demand Action here with us on Make It Plain, Shannon Watts. Shannon, how are you? And and uh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Yes. How you doing? I'm good. How are you? I'm just fine. And I trust your family's doing okay in this pandemic. Thankfully, yes. That's good. That's good. Um, yeah, I, I was noticing something you were tweeting. Um, some of these people who want to violate and stop the lockdown have been carrying guns themselves, haven't they? Yeah, we are seeing a lot of armed insurrectionists showing up at state houses, this group of vocal minority. They, they don't represent the vast majority of Americans who support stronger gun laws and support, support the state home orders. Um, and you know they're they're using their guns to threaten and intimidate uh, civilians, but also lawmakers. Yeah, yeah. Um, I've also spoken with several guests about how gun sales have gone up in this pandemic. What what do you make of that, Jen? Yeah, in March we had a historic number of guns sold. At least three point seven million background checks were conducted. And you know we have a gun lobby in this country, and the way they exist is by juicing gun sales in times of crisis. We saw it after Hurricane Katrina. Uh, we saw it after Hurricane Harvey. This coronavirus crisis is no different. Um, they're saying that people need guns in order to protect themselves from looters, um, and so that's that's why we saw the sales last month. Um, but because the NRA is so in the hole as an organization and, and so is the gun manufacturing industry, it's still not enough to keep them afloat. Um, they've fired almost 10% of their workforce so far uh, at the NRA. Um, and we see uh, gun manufacturers filing for bankruptcy. So the NRA is weaker than they've ever been and our movement is stronger than it's ever been. So uh, talk to us about what Moms Demand Action has been doing during this period, also to help make them weaker, because that's important. Yeah, uh, we actually um, put out a, a new website today. You can go to our uh, momsdemandaction.org and, and see the new website about the NRA. We've always said our job is to shine a light under the refrigerator and force the cockroaches to run out. And that's what we've been doing now for almost eight years, um, is sharing the uh, malfeasance and the misinformation uh, generated by the NRA, including you know, the, the NRA CEO's own self-dealing, right? Whether it's private jet travel or trying to buy vacation homes, just generally misusing their members' funds. And you all have been having virtual meetings and gatherings yourselves, haven't you? We have. You know, we never imagined, obviously, this moment. No one did. But thankfully, we had prepared. We've invested in technology that most companies and organizations only give to their leadership. We make them available to all of our volunteers, mm -hmm. Hustle, Slack, Van, um, all kinds of technologies that enable these volunteers, hundreds of thousands of them to interact with each other, but also to register people to vote and to educate them about gun sense voters. We were supposed to have an in-person advocacy day. We have one for every state every year. Um, in California, we had 800 RSVPs and 
because we shifted at the last moment and made it virtual, even more people were allowed and enabled to attend. And that just goes to show that this technology can help us be more inclusive and more equitable. So I don't think we're going back. You know, the, the things we're doing now will be part of our activism going forward. Yeah, and that's, that's good here. I, I think they have to be. On the other side, though, is, I know you said the NRA and the gun industry is in the hole. That's good news uh, for our side. But have they been doing, been able to do any organizing themselves? I mean, I know that there's not, well, I don't, I don't know. Is there any legislation that Mitch McConnell is going to try to ease through or do anything with during this period? We haven't seen that. Um, There are a lot of bills sitting on Mitch McConnell's desk that would actually benefit uh, Americans because it would strengthen our gun laws like background checks, closing the Charleston loophole, um, passing the Violence Against Women Act. There's, there's bills like that sitting on the Senate Majority Leader's desk. He has refused to act on them now for over a year. Um, but the good news is that we have stopped the NRA's priority legislation from passing now for almost four years. And so we've gotten very good at playing defense. And we've passed really strong legislation um, in state houses before many of the sessions ended this year due to the coronavirus crisis. For example, in Virginia this year, we passed so far five new good gun laws, and we're getting ready to pass two more. Yeah, and, and that's that's big news, especially in a state like Virginia, isn't it? That's the, that's the, home, the headquarters, the home state of the NRA. It's the NRA's backyard, and we did that because we were able to flip both chambers of the General Assembly in November to right. be a gun sense majority. And, and that's all the difference in the world. You, if I noticed the first thing you mentioned was getting voters registered because yes. that's, that's the big difference in all of this, isn't it? It is. And we just invested $1.5 million in students demand action. They're going to take the lead on registering voters. And as you know, they have lots of time on their hands, unfortunately, for the next couple of months. And so they're spending a lot of that time using our technology to register new voters and tell them when and how to vote. Yeah. Um, it, it, the You mentioned again them being in the hole. Uh, uh, we know a lot of businesses and a lot of efforts may not recover well at all from what this pandemic is leading to. What about the NRA and the gun industry? Is this the type of thing that is going to leave them in in a pretty lengthy hole, so to speak? Well, the NRA is in itself, just as an organization, $100 million in the hole because of their legal fees to defend themselves against right. lawsuits um, and investigations, most both of which are filed in New York and DC where they're chartered. Um, but then the gun manufacturing industry, is their situation is even more dire. Um, because Donald Trump is president, there's no boogeyman in the White House to make people afraid and buy guns, except last month when we had the coronavirus crisis. But generally, they've had a really hard time selling guns and accessories. Um, I'm sure they're just waiting for a Democratic president to come along so they can juice gun sales again. But if we can win in the 2020 elections, and we're going to spend at least $60 million to do so, uh, if we can get a gun sense president, flip the Senate, hold the House, and then change the makeup of state legislatures, then we can essentially keep our foot on the neck of the NRA. So even when they are able to have more gun sales, um, at least there are common sense laws in place that regulate guns. Um, all the projections suggest that we have a good shot. Uh, that is, um, Democrats and or progressives and liberals, those of us uh, who are for gun reform, that we actually have a good shot in November. Do, do you and Moms Demand Action feel as confident? We do. Um, you know, I was just hearing months ago that we probably couldn't flip the Senate from our internal uh, political people. And now they're saying absolutely we can. Mm -hmm. Um, due to the polling and the way that things have changed in the last month or two. So we're feeling very bullish about our success in 2020. Obviously, there's no playbook for how you campaign and get out the vote during a global pandemic, but we can write that playbook as an organization. We have the human and the financial resources um, to put our flag in the ground and say, this is how you do it. This is how you digitally organize. Yeah. I'm always also intrigued too, Shannon, about what other countries do, how they respond to crises, not only like the pandemic, but also when it comes to gun reform. As we know, many countries are far ahead of the United States. But just curious, do we know uh, whether other nations have taken special initiatives in this current crisis, in the the pandemic, to curb 
uh, gun sales and gun activity? Well, no other high-income country has the lax gun laws that we have, and also no other high-income country um, has the gun law, a gun lobby that is as wealthy and as powerful as the NRA. However, what's interesting is that just today we saw um, the Prime Minister of Canada, Justin Trudeau, use his executive powers to essentially prohibit all semi-automatic rifles, um, assault weapons, as he calls them in his country. And that was because the deadliest mass shooting that has ever taken place in the country of Canada happened just a couple of weeks ago during the coronavirus crisis. Yeah, yeah, and, and, and that's important as well. You'd also like to think that people will see that there's not a lot of difference between the elected officials who want to either want to fight the lockdown or end the lockdown early or act as if this isn't a real pandemic and that they are the same people who are buddy, buddy with the NRA. You know, I mean, that's pretty much consistent across the board, I think, especially in the South, right? Yeah. You know, these gun extremists that we're seeing show up at state houses, um, it's really an extension of Donald Trump's base. They hold the same beliefs and same values um, and this is a, a small group. It's been a vocal minority. Our goal is to get the silent majority, not to be silent anymore. Going into the, this election cycle, gun violence prevention was the number three issue for Democratic voters. Obviously, um, we are going to be crowded out by concerns about the coronavirus crisis, which I understand, but it's important to remember that the coronavirus crisis is actually exacerbating gun violence in this country whether it's domestic gun violence because women are isolated with abusers, unintentional shootings because millions of kids are home unexpectedly, or gun suicide, uh, people who are isolated or are worried about their economic future. And so long after the coronavirus crisis ends, we will still be dealing with the reverberations of the historic amount of gun sales last month, many of whom are new gun owners who don't have to have training depending on the, the state they live in and don't know how to secure, securely store their firearm. Yeah. Um, the, as you talk about the NRA and, and losing money, has that also impacted Shannon, their ability to spend money on campaigns for politicians on their side? Absolutely. The NRA spent about $30 million on Donald Trump's campaign in 2016 um, because a lot of it was dark money. We have no idea where it came from. Uh, they won't be clear about whether or not that money came from Russia, for example. Mm -hmm. um, but then, you know, in 2018, we were able to outspend them. We spent about $30 million. We had an incredibly successful election cycle where we elected over a thousand gun sense candidates across the country, including our own spokeswoman, Lucy McBath, who is now a congresswoman from Georgia. Um, we flipped the makeup of seven state legislatures. And then in 2019, as I mentioned, you know, we outspent the NRA in Virginia eight to one. We invested about $2.5 million. And we're going to spend $60 million, uh, in 2020. And for example, $8 million of that will go into the state of Texas. So we're going into important states that are either swing states or evolving states um, so that we can make sure that that uh, the constituents are accurately represented. They're not represented by gun extremists. Lucy McBath is uh, one of our favorites on this show. How, how's she doing? She was, I mean, that was a big victory in a tough, tough district. I mean, it was yep. pretty much flipped. So how are things looking for her heading back into the fall? You all feel pretty confident you can hold that seat? feel confident, but look, it's going to be tough. And everyone needs to support lawmakers who are in swing states. And Lucy's a good example, are in swing districts. Lauren Underwood in Illinois is another one. Um, Kendra Horn in Oklahoma. Like th Those are seats that we were happy but surprised to win. And make no mistake, they need our financial support. They need our support to get out the vote. Yeah. And, and folks, this is important. Even though we're all sheltering in place, there's still a lot that needs to be done. Uh, to support these candidates, and, and November will be here before we know it. You mentioned several women. Um, I believe you all are doing something else right now. I see the hashtag uh, demanding women. Yeah. Uh, tell us about that, if you would. It's a conversation. You know, uh, it just so happens many of these women are also in the running for vice president. Mm -hmm. And uh, I had a great conversation with Stacey Abrams the other day, and next week I'll be talking to Elizabeth Warren and uh, Amy Klobuchar. And then the week after that, Kamala Harris. So it's a great way to sit down and, and talk about during the coronavirus crisis, what can we be doing to protect women in particular, but just to address our nation's gun violence crisis. Yeah, no, that is important. And, and 
do do you think there's an opportunity um, with? I mean, we know the vice president will be a woman. I think that's pretty much assured. Uh, it's it's kind of interesting to say that too, just to know that that's going to happen with with a level of assuredness, you know, isn't it? So excited. Uh, yeah, I mean, we just don't know which one, but all the ones you named, I mean, are, are great. Uh, but that also gives us some assurance, doesn't it? that gun violence and gun reform will be a major part of the conversation going into the fall, won't it? A hundred percent. It will be, um, even though the coronavirus crisis is, is really um, sucking up all the news cycles, again, which makes sense, uh, it will continue to be an issue. And, you know, I, I have to say, I'm very concerned about domestic gun violence, about unintentional shootings, about gun suicide. And also, you know, there were no school shootings in the month of March, and yeah. yet we're going to be going into the fall with all these new gun sales and unsecured guns. And I, I really do worry about school shootings in this country. So we need everyone to get off the sidelines and to, to vote on this issue. Yeah, no and, question. And, and we just rolled out our Gun Sense candidates. Um, if people want to know which candidates, where they live, where they stand on this issue, go to gunsensevoter.org. All right, gunsensevoter.org to see where people are and see who you can get behind. Uh, I, I must say, for those, Shannon, that, seem insensitive about this disease and the deaths that have happened. It frankly reminds me of the same behavior when there have been major incidents like uh, uh, Sandy Hook and others, where, you know, people really should have just really said no more. And it, it they couldn't get it then. But this same attitude to me, sometimes we see in this cold COVID conversation, so, uh, and yet at the same time, um, you, you talk about women, these same individuals want to use the pandemic to try and impact women's reproductive rights as well. So, you know, their idea of lives that matter is not only very different of our, different than ours, but it's, it's also very subjective. And so, again, I think you have that parallel. Those who, who have not cared about gun violence, also those who went into lockdowns and, and minimized. So, oh, well, it's only been 50,000 people. How can you say something like that? It's only been a certain number of people. That's like saying, well, it's only been a certain number of people. And it's also like the argument that, which drives me crazy when listeners say this to me. Well, Mark, there are more um, uh, automobile accidents. I know someone said that, I forget who was, said that early on in this whole COVID debate. Well, it's not as bad as automobile accidents. No, that's not <laughs> that's not acceptable. None of that is. Yeah, well, when you compare it to gun violence, I mean, you know, first of all, um, we have taken a lot of measures to stem the tide of, of vehicle accidents in this country. You know, whether it's speed limits or um, you know road strips, uh, better technology in cars, right. um, yeah. airbags. We've done none of that for gun violence prevention. And, and when it, you compare that to the COVID crisis, I mean, obviously, car accidents aren't contagious. So it doesn't make sense. It's a political calculus. Um, and, and I think it's really exposed that agenda for what it is, which is, um, in many ways, hypocritical. Yeah, it, it, it most definitely is, uh, is hypocritical. So let people know, um, if they're listening, what they can do, where they can go, um, uh, I know we mentioned gunsensevoter.org. That's very important. But people who want to be involved in some yep. of the virtual meetings and, and how they can help organize, yep. make calls, let people know how they can do that, please. Yeah, and we make it so easy to plug in and get involved. If you want to be part of Students Demand Action, just text the word STUDENTS to 64433. And if you want to be part of Moms Demand Action, and we're not just women or moms, we're mothers and others, just text mm -hmm. the word READY to 64433. Okay. Uh, folks, that's important. We invite you to get get on board. Also, go to gunsensevoter.org. So we'll look forward to uh, Shannon having conversations with some of these other uh, women candidates as well and, and women uh, policymakers and legislators. Shannon, we so appreciate what you have done um, and what you continue to do. I mean, frankly, what you are doing is as, as life-saving as some of these frontline workers are doing in this pandemic because you know, gun violence has been an, an epidemic in this country, so to speak. Uh, yeah. it, it has cost far too many lives. People don't think of gun violence as a disease per se, but in many ways it really is. It is, yeah. No, I appreciate that so much, and I'm so grateful that you're shining a light on it. Yeah, no, we'll continue to do so. So thank you so much, Shannon Watts. Keep up thank the great, you. great work, okay? 
Thank All you. Right. Have a great day. All right, you too. Take care now. We'll be in bye. touch. All right, bye-bye. Thank you for listening to Make It Plain and Get Woke. Remember to listen, like, and subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and wherever you get your podcasts. If all minds are clear, it has been Made Plain.